evening and thank you so much for your time. My name is Lillian Muli and on Women in Leadership tonight, she is a publisher of True Love, Drum and Home and Living magazines and tonight we want to find out her journey, want to, her to tell us about her journey to being a successful publisher. She's the CEO of Carol Mandy Media and she's our guest in studio this evening. Carol, thank you for being with us this evening. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Looking lovely. And you as well. Thanks. So let's begin with your journey as a journalist. Um, Carol, take us back to when all this started. You know what? Um, for me, I always say that writing was in my blood. And I think that writing, in a sense, chose me because my father, my mother and father actually met because they were part of a, um, an East African writing competition and they were still in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my mother won the competition in her country. She comes from Tanzania. And my father was also one of the top three in Kenya. And so they met because of that, mm -hmm. because of a love for writing. So I think it just became something that I was going to do, you know. Um, and growing up, I had all these fancy ideas. I want to do law. I want to do all these things. But interestingly, the one thing that was consistent throughout my life was just the writing. That always kept coming back to me. And so when I finished with university and I had a Bachelor of Education um, in Literature and English, I finished with university, I found myself in the media mm -hmm. with actually no training on journalism but having to learn on the job. Where? At Nation mm -hmm. Media Group. So that was a very exciting time for me, coming in green but just really learning. But I think what with some of the qualities that really make a good journalist, you know, a nose for a good story, a huge amount of curiosity were things that I already had. Mm -hmm. A passion for seeing truth delivered, you know, were things I already had. So that's how my journalism, you know, I ended up in journalism and eventually magazine. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like I said earlier, she's the publisher behind those glossy, beautiful covers. If you come across a True Love magazine, a drum magazine, you know they're all over, home and living, she's the face behind that. So when South Africa's Media 24 decided to shut down, um, it's uh, Kenyan uh, franchise. Uh, what prompted you to bid for the Kenyan franchise? What prompted you to do that? I think the woman at the end of the supermarket shelf, knowing that she had um, a right, I felt, um, to be able to to receive her inspiration and to see her aspirations showcased to her in a way that she could relate to. To be able to see not just faces of international celebrities but faces of celebrities that were closer home. Um, to read stories of women, you know, that are, you know, from, from our market, things like that. That woman was what made me feel, we, you can't tell us that there is no room mm -hmm. for um, products like this in our market because I could see her very clearly and I knew sh she loved this product and she desired it mm -hmm. and um, so the option was what that she picks essence or cosmopolitan but I wasn't going to really carry her aspirations in a voice that she could relate to mm -hmm. so that that for me was and continues to be at the center of why I, I, you know, I publish women's magazines. It's just that woman who will pick that up that copy at the end of every month. Mm -hmm. And you know, because there was uh, skeptics at at first were not too sure yeah. whether True Love would survive. Um, it was off the shelves for a while, and then you know it came back on. That's True Love and Drum and Home and Living. Um, so, what did it take for you to actually win the bid to actually? take this on as your own project? I think for me what worked in my favor was that I had worked with uh, Media24 back then so they had every confidence that when they gave me the brands that they knew that I would um, be true to what the brand promises to offer and so I think it was more a question of they had the confidence in me that I could do this um, and that was really what, 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 what helped in that bidding process. I was, go I was very gung-ho. I mean, I didn't have much business experience. I was an editor and, you know, a publisher, but not too much of a business person, you know, experience. Mm -hmm. So, but I was very gung-ho and, you know, jumped in and I told one of my friends, I'm either going to do this and do it well, or I'm going to fail spectacularly and all of you guys are going to watch this, me fail. But, you know, it's, it's worked. It's worked. It has. And how many years so far and what has been your experience taking on this huge, huge project? Um, it's been very exciting. You know, you wake up every morning and um, sometimes, you, you know, I, I have 
challenges you know as any person in business would have challenges I have those moments but it's very exciting to still do this and to still have a product that is new and fresh every single month uh -huh. and is telling a new story every single month so that it, it's very exciting for me to be able to do that uh -huh. so how many years now 12 years okay. of wow. publishing congratulations thank <laughs> you so what um, talking about the woman that buys the true love or the drum and I know the drum and you know it's not just women I know gentlemen will yeah. also buy you know the drum in the home and living what stories are you telling what's what's the take home for that consumer of your brand that you know well for drum for instance um, drum has a huge heritage on the African continent people remember my parents used to buy drum magazine um, you know and I have a picture I think when I'm three years old and there's a drum magazine it they were huge back then um, on our coffee table and I'm seated between my mom and my dad so they read drum magazine and they consumed it then there was true love and you're talking about you're talking about the 70s and the 80s so these products have really um, morphed uh -huh. but with drum for instance I mean drum told the aspirations of Africans in the 60s you know these were people who were just coming into a new consciousness as as you know because of independence so they were coming into this place where they felt that we have our destiny in our hands uh -huh. but then now when we relaunched drum we said you know as a society magazine and you're absolutely right that it caters to both men and women although women are the larger readership so when we relaunched it we said we have independence now what is the the new take there's this new African you know who also has aspirations and has to redefine his or her aspirations in a global environment so it's no longer about I want to be free uh -huh. as an African but it's about I want to express myself and find myself in a global context uh -huh. and that's what drum aims to do by showcasing the lives of people in society and with true love it's a women's magazine plain and simple um, women between the ages of 25 to about 45 consume this product and that's you know that, that that's what we that's who we speak to uh -huh. I want to talk about magazine covers um, being criticized for creating false role models yes. um, and particularly you know just the challenge you find therein who to pick as the perfect cover model there's the issue of Photoshop there's the issue of that flawless looking lady who you know I want to be but how how good a role model are your cover models do you consider such issues okay <laughs> those are like five questions <laughs> I will go one I'll try and go one by one Let's and I'll try and your remember. cover models yes. yes the criteria the criteria well basically they have to be relevant number one they have to be relevant they they sit within the demographic of women that we speak to uh -huh. um, they have to have an interesting and inspiring or a controversial story to tell so basically those you know um, you know that's the criteria and then you know they have to be newsworthy at that particular time oh. so a lot of times you will notice that we will put someone on the cover who's doing something new whether it's in her business it's in her career it's in her relationship or whatever oh. she could even have just lost weight and that's a new thing in her life mm -hmm. so they have to be current in that sense mm -hmm. so those are I mean it's it's our cover uh, brainstorm sessions are hectic yeah. you know because we literally look at a person and discuss every single element about that person mm -hmm. and why they would then make a cover and then we also tend to dipstick our covers so basically we will choose you know we'll have a panel of people that we will call to you know you know and ask them what do you think of this person and those that panel normally is representative of the readers mm -hmm. so we have it's a very intense process yeah. um, and you know it's heated because you know people have different views about who should be on the cover what about, Even yeah, what about the photoshop have different issue views. what about the photoshop issue Do it's a big you, issue yeah. i think globally it's a big issue because um you know trying to make women appear like they're not is wrong so for us we do photoshop i mean but what what is photoshop in our instance it's um you know you take this beautiful image and you've been on our cover twice yeah. so you know <laughs> and you do know that it normally takes about a whole day yeah. to do a cover shoot so you take this beautiful image of this beautiful person um but maybe they were having a bad 
you know they're tired because by the time you've done all the photography they're tired so it's small things like maybe we'll brighten the eyes if there's a pimple we'll take that out it's little things nothing that yeah. your phone doesn't do with with the filters, <laughs> with the filters on yes. it you know mm -hmm. um, because the idea Lillian is to put you in your best foot forward or in your best to present you in your best light mm. to give you an image because like I said we're selling aspiration so I don't want you looking terrible. Yeah. I don't want you looking like you've just come out of bed, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want you looking, you know, in a certain way. Looking beautiful, looking glamorous, looking happy. You know, those are the things I want to see you convey when you are on the cover. Has the digital space affected your industry? A lot of people are able to just go online now and, and get the same content. And, and yes, get their content online. Has this affected your industry? I think there will be some effect because, you, you know, um, we will have, uh, and we have had a few, you know, readers, um, you know, preferring to maybe get the digital copy of our magazines mm -hmm. and download it and read it on, on their iPads or things like that. So there is that, you know, but I think it creates an opportunity. For me, I look at it as it creates an opportunity because it's still content, but it's just content that you're consuming on different devices. Mm -hmm. And um, being able to get that reader and to, because with a magazine, you just have, you know, you only pick it up once a month. Mm -hmm. But with anything you do on digital, it's, 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 it's it's more current you can do you can provide content on a daily basis and things like that so for me it's an opportunity I don't think it will kill magazines not I don't think actually no for a fact it won't kill magazines um, but it, it is a new platform mm -hmm. um, a new space to play let's talk about your work mantra Carol um, you're a woman you are leading a huge team so your leadership style um, and what people can borrow of that as a woman um, as opposed to of course what men would ordinarily do and I suppose um, <laughs> um, men might have a different approach to their leadership style I may be wrong yeah. tell us about your style it's interesting you know because when I started out um, you know as, as I grew up in my career one of the things I tried to do was I tried to be more masculine okay I don't know how that even <laughs> works but I tried to wear all these suits that were straight that portrayed me in a more serious way and all of that but generally I've never been that you know um, bulldog you know go get a sort of look had that go get a look and so it was I was trying to do it by observing men that I knew or successful men that mm -hmm. I knew mm -hmm. but then I figured out you know pretty early that you know do this and do do it like you do it I'm not going to have that strong aggressive voice um, I don't have that you know look that you know puts people in the corner um, and so I basically decided to work with what my strengths were and I think as a woman generally for women in leadership women generally tend to approach situations in the workplace with a more win-win situ you know win-win approach so how do we do this better okay. so that we all get ahead so I think for me I've been interested not just in my own success but in the success of people who work with me mm -hmm. I really want to see them grow mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to to mute that I'm not trying to mute the empathy I'm not trying to mute the fact that there are moments when yes it's hard and I almost feel like I'm going to break down and cry but I'm not trying to to be a, a man I'm going to do this as a woman and I'm going to use the skills that I have innately as a woman the compassion um, the ability to care for people um, in a deeper way and to understand when when you know my staffers have children and the challenges they go through and we sit around the table and we we talk about it mm -hmm. and I'm not going to brush that so for me I use it more as an as an advantage I think it's an advantage for me mm -hmm. and I think it's an advantage for women in business or in leadership to use who they are and the things that that you know that bring that that help women to be great leaders are actually intrinsically in them as naturals and and, and, and mm -hmm. things like that well said and as we close your best cover ever and why Wow, you know, I've had so many covers, and every time I think this is my best cover. Yeah. Um, They're all great, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I love them yeah. all, so it's hard. But I think um, the best cover was probably the our topless cover. It was. It didn't quite 
wasn't entirely a topless <laughs> cover, mm. but um, it was 2007, and it was the cause behind it was great. Uh, it was our breast cancer issue, and we had three women on the cover, um, basically posing with, you know, just covering their breasts. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was to raise money for breast cancer. And that's what we did with that issue. And we got the money in and we were able to um, send it back to the cause. So that for me was the best cover. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And as we close, balancing work and family, um, you must be an extremely busy lady. So how do you juggle? Both. What's, imp what's important to me is, um, you know, I'm really grateful to God that I've um, I have a very supportive family but what's important for me is that at any one point um, when I have deadlines in the office then that means sometimes I'm working weekends and you know you work in, in, in the same industry so you're working weekends you're working late hours um, you do that and you're a hundred percent present there mm -hmm. and when I'm home I'm a hundred percent present there so I think that's how I, 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 I don't believe that you will have a, 50-50, that it will all be equal uh -huh. and everybody will be happy. Sometimes, you know, the family will, will suffer, but then you make up for that later. Or sometimes the business may suffer because you need to spend time with a child who's maybe sitting an exam or who's sick, but, you know, that's life. Okay, we've been talking to, thank you so much, we've been talking to Carol Mandy, she's the CEO of Carol Mandy Media. So next time you come across a true love or a drum or a home and living, grab yourself a copy. She's the brains behind that. Thank you so much for talking to us this evening. It's been great. We're back to the day. Don't go away.